Terrific. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to Coffee with the Principal. My name is Cheryl Bloom. I am Madison's proud principal, and I welcome you to our October meeting. We're going to go over some important topics. WASC is one of them, which is Western Association of Schools and Colleges, and our new PBIS plan. But before we get to that, I want to welcome our brand new assistant principal, Ms. Grimaldo Ramirez, who's actually in the first hour and a half of being our brand new principal. She started this morning. Welcome, Ms. Grimaldo. If you'd like to introduce yourself and say a few words. Good morning, everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to be here at Madison Middle School. Um, everybody has been so wonderful this morning. Um, I'm looking forward to a great journey with all of our staff and, of course, all of our students. So um, thank you for the warm wishes today. Looking forward to serving this community. Thank you, Ms. Grimaldo. We are so very happy to welcome you to Madison. We have some exciting things going on at Madison this year. Moving on to our next slide. Let's talk about our PBIS, which is Positive Behavior Intervention Support, our vision and plan. We want our students to be truly positive and productive citizens. And remember that phrase, truly positive and productive citizens, because we're going to get to it as it ties into our WASP accreditation idea in just a minute. But we are now promoting the same expectations throughout campus, and those are shown on our poster, our little poster here, which is now in every classroom. We want our students to be responsible, to be present in their classes, to be respectful of everyone and everything, and to be safe. And what does that mean? It means to wear a uniform and a mask every day so that we are safe and we are protected. It's to follow directions, to be kind, to turn off cell phones so that they do not um, they do not interfere with the educational plan, and to throw away trash because we are, as I said, respectful to everyone and everything, and everything includes our campus. So everybody on the campus is buying in. And how do we do that to promote consistency, structure, stability, and accountability? Well, moving on. We have some very exciting incentives for our students. First, we have our Buster Badges. And if you are an eighth grade parent, then you remember them from two years ago. But at Madison, we stress a growth mindset, which means I may not be able to do it now, but I can do it later. I will be able to do it later, not yet, but later and I'm always striving forward. So every five week marking period, starting this semester with the 15th marking period, which is in just a couple of weeks, every student who is online to culminate, meaning that they have at least a 2.0 GPA, that they have no more than two U's in citizenship and cooperation, and they have 96% or better in attendance. So those are our culmination requirements. And we stress them from day one here because we don't want students to wake up suddenly in the second semester of their eighth grade year and say, I really wanna culminate and now I don't have the opportunity to do so. So we have the same expectations from the very first time that the students set foot on this campus. And how do we incentivize that? the Buster Badges. So if you are on track to culminate, but by the 15th week in the first semester, you're going to get a Buster Badge, which is a sticker that you put onto your ID badge. And what does it get you? It rewards you with free dress on Mondays. Everybody will wear their lanyard that we give them and their card, their ID card. And so we can see the sticker and they will proudly display the fact that they are earning culmination requirements and they get free dress on Mondays, which is a very big thing, let me assure you, in middle school. If at the 15 week, your student isn't earning it yet, 
they still have five weeks for the next batch. So it's the kind of thing where you always have to keep in mind, you need to continually work towards the positive. If you're doing it now, fabulous, continue to keep it up. If you haven't done it yet, you have the opportunity to always succeed and always do better. So those are our buster badges and they're incumbent, as I said, upon the 15 and then the 20 week marks. And then when we start second semester, the 10 week marks, the 15 week marks, the 20 week marks. The other thing that we have are best cards and buster bucks. And again, remember the word B-E-S-T, best, because we're gonna come back to that in just a minute with WASP. But these are basically caught being good cards. So if we see a student who is picking up trash, even if it's not his own, if we see a student who is being very polite, who is moving through the hallways nicely and cleanly and safely and respectfully, then they're going to get one of these nifty little buster, uh, best cards. And after they get five best cards, they can turn that in to the secretary in the counseling office who will hand them a buster buck. And buster bucks are wonderful things because they are immediately redeemable for any snack in the student store. Water, Gatorade, ice cream, cookies, anything that's in there. And that's how we say, thank you for being a good citizen. Thank you for being respectful, for caring about your fellow student, for caring about your campus. And it is especially for non-instructional time. Buster badges are for instructional time, that's your GPA. But best cards and buster bucks celebrate students who are good citizens and who are respectful outside of class because that's also part of our middle school mission here at Madison. Moving on, please. Now let's talk for a second about WASC accreditation. And as I said, WASC, W-S-A-S-C, W-A-S-C, yes, there you go. Western Association of Schools and Colleges and it's accreditation. And what is accreditation? It's a process that all high schools and all colleges throughout the country go through because it sets basic standards for grades so that it's not so that everybody is on a level playing field and that's very important so that your grades from high school can be counted towards college and your grades in college will allow you to move between colleges now middle school's grades are not like high school and and college but accreditation now exists for middle school because we wanna make sure that there are some basic standards here as well. And we are starting, we are one of the first schools, it's only been around for the last few years, to be asked to go through the accreditation process. So we went through a very big self-study where we looked very hard at all of our um, positives, all of our challenges, and we used the WASC framework and the questions to be able to examine our instruction, our data, our climate. We have to give evidence of that. Where are we? Where do we wanna be? How do we set our priorities? How do we mark progress and success? And we've been doing that for the last couple of years. One of the ways we do that is for the entire school once again to come together and create our slows or student learner outcomes, which are right there. Madison Bulldogs are best. Again, B-E-S-T. So we have it all summarized, our student learning learner outcomes, what we want students to know by the time they culminate here. We want them to be boundlessly creative, complex thinkers effective communicators and collaborators, strong, purposeful, responsible learners. And here we go. Remember I said it was going to come back, T for truly positive, productive citizens. So we are using this to embed it all over the campus to really get the students to start to live these ideals. We did, as I said, write a 150 page document. And next week, a virtual visiting committee will come to our campus through Zoom and talk to our teachers, our students, and 
really see what's going on on the campus. Their idea is to validate what we've put in our report, warts and all. Our report is not 150 pages of how wonderful we are. It's some of how wonderful we are and what terrific programs we offer and how well our students are doing. But it's also, this is where we see our challenges. This is how we want to address our challenges. And they're going to validate the report and say, yes, you are absolutely clear-eyed about where you are and where you want to be and how you're going to get there. It keeps us in a cycle of continuous improvement because this is not a one shot deal after they leave here and after we hopefully are accredited. They're going to come back at least every three years to make sure that we stay on this path and it's very important that we stay in this continuous cycle of improvement that we stay with the same standardized look at all of our data and our instructional programs so that we can begin to make progress even more so than we've done. The other added benefit is if we are accredited next week or as a result of next week, because we won't find out for several months, then we get to have this lovely little, and you see it in the box down there, Western Association of Schools and Colleges symbol that we can put on our website. And that is very prestigious. Many, many middle schools do not have that. They haven't even been asked to uh, join in this process. And it will be a reflection of the hard work and commitment that we have to Madison. It will be a recognition of the value of a Madison education, of our high expectations, of our continuing successes. And it will be a benefit to everyone, to our students, to our staff, to our faculty, to our parents, to our community. And it will be really a very nice, essentially feather in our cap to show the students, to show the community that we are always striving forward and we are giving a very good foundation to allow our students to progress to high school, to college, and to beyond. So that's a little bit about our positive behavior support plan and our WASC visit. I am going to turn the meeting over now to Ms. Amari, who is our WASC committee chair. She's our leadership committee chair. And to Ms. Lester and Ms. Goldstein, who also were part of our leadership team. I need to run to another meeting, but I thank you all very much for being here. Thank you for your support of Madison. And we're here to do you and your students proud. Thank you very much. Ms. Amari. Thank you, Mrs. Bloom, and thank you for joining us for this month's Coffee with the Principal. As Mrs. Bloom mentioned, we are going to um, review uh, the WASC process and what we did as a school to get our report together and do some deep self-reflection and look at our areas of strength and our areas of growth. And in doing so, they asked us to look at five specific categories. And the entire staff broke off into groups and reviewed each category and wrote some, some of our strengths, some of our programs, some of the things that apply to that category. So we're going to start with category A, moving on. So category A talks about our vision and purpose, governance, leadership, staff, and resources. This basically discusses this specific category discusses uh, what we're doing on campus in terms of our vision and our purpose. Is it clear? Is it coherent? Are we aligning our student learner outcomes to our vision and purpose? And are we aligning all three of those things to LAUSD's vision? And so we took time to reflect on that. And we also wanted to ensure that our fundamental mission is to always support student, and student learning and improving student learning. And um, we want our students to achieve high academic standards to be prepared for the next four years and beyond. We discussed our governance and our leadership. We have our school site council, which is the governing body that um, reviews all things that have to do with categorical budgets and specifically our school plan for student achievement. It's a plan we write every year. And, um, 
We make sure that we're looking at yearly data, reflecting on that data, and coming up with ways to use that categorical budget to provide our students with resources in order to help them grow academically, social, and emotionally. We have our SDM, which is our shared decision-making um, governing body. And the shared decision-making governing body is, includes students and teachers and um, various staff and community members. And it looks at particular events and activities on campus. So if we wanted to do something specific on campus to reward students, it would go through shared decision-making. We have our ILT, which is our instructional leadership team. And that's the team that guides um, the instruction with, within all departments. So every department chair joins us during the ILT. We discuss uh, what we're doing, what we wanna improve upon. We share data, et cetera. And we use, we always have our mission, vision, and slows in mind. Anytime we meet in those governing bodies and those governing committees to ensure that we're always looking at supporting our students learning and thriving. Um, we invite all stakeholders to work together with us um, at any time through parent workshops, through our governing committee meetings, um, through various activities on campus. And that's what we really reflected on here in category A and what we discussed when sharing our report with WASC. I'm going to move on to the next slide, but pass it over to Ms. Goldstein, who is also part of our leadership team. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ms. Goldstein. Like Ms. Amari said, I am your TSP EL coordinator here at Madison. And so for category B, we were really analyzing what is happening in terms of curriculum here at Madison. So what is happening in every department? What are the teachers working on? And so it make, making sure that it's standard-based learning and really reflecting on all the practices that revolve around the curriculum happening here at Madison. So we know teachers at Madison are integrating real-world examples, and this is seen through what happens with computer coding and robotics, with cybersecurity, and there is a lot of electives here at Madison to try to meet the needs of all the students and not only meet their needs, but to address their interest in different, in different classes. Um, in, at Madison, all teachers and all departments work together in planning and implementing and assessing student learning. Um, expectations for student learning are emphasized and mapped out throughout the year, and they're emphasized in their classes. Um, majority of the teachers at Madison consider themselves common sense educators. And many of our teachers are MLG certified, which means mastery, learning, and grading. And so they're using those practices as they um, not only teach the students, but really evaluate the students' work. Thank you. I'm Ms. Lester. I am one of your assistant principals and um, kind of building off of that curriculum. So we have developed this curriculum and our teachers are utilizing that in there. And so then we looked at instruction is how the um, teachers are actually uh, promoting and how we're uh, supporting the teachers in being able to really support the students in uh, accessing the curriculum. And so some of the things that we found as some of our strengths is that we are dedicating our time for our teachers and staff to be trained in how to engage and support students of all populations, which include um, our English language learners, how we can support all of our students in social emotional learning, and also how we can really prepare our students for the modern workforce by looking at quality instructional technology strategies. We also have um, dedicated uh, time and space for full-time personnel in order to uh, really support our students in their achievement. We have on campus an instructional technology facilitator who is able to work with our teachers doing co-teaching along with coaching and sometimes doing some small group activities with our students around technology integration. We also have a full-time college and career, or career coach who helps out really kind of planning and working with our students and teachers to um, prepare for college and career options. We have a full-time counselor who is supporting our English language learners. 
We have a PSA and a PSW, which is a, who are able to support our non students that in other non academic academic needs somewhere around like things that are around um, attendance or um, mental health. Um, needing supplies, anything like that. So we have um, resources that really are looking at the whole child and the family and giving them support. We also, to be able to support, because uh, it's not just here at the school, we have a lot of community partnerships that we've been able to bring in and build relationships with to be able to support our teachers, our students, and our families to be able to be academically and socially um, prepared. Some of the um, partnerships we have are with the UCLA Biomedical Engineering Society, who does um, activities with our students around preparing for college. We have our Verizon Innovative Learning Schools partnership, which is being able to prepare our teachers to teach in the modern day um, school system, but also are providing um, our families with uh, free hotspots with data. We have School to Home and our Microsoft partnerships, Young Producers, Warner Brothers Pictures, Big Smiles, and the American Society of Civil Engineers Los Angeles. And these are just a, a few of our partnerships. And we are always looking at new partnerships to be able to expand. We also looking at our found that looking at our special education program, that our instruction really is helping to prepare our students with special needs to be able to progress from the special day program, moving into the resource program, being able to be uh, better prepared for high school and uh, college and beyond. And so this really looks at preparing our students to be able to be part of the least restrictive environment and also opportunities for them to be able to showcase their skills with the high expectations that we know that they can achieve too. In category D, we really looked at our um, assessments and accountability. There's really only one way to determine how effective our instruction and curriculum are, and that's to look at data. And so in category D, we looked at the various assessments, the various tests we use as a school and within individual classrooms. So teachers in classrooms are um, using their own formative assessments where they are teaching the content and then they are administering their assessments that go with that content, with that curriculum. And then there's also state tests, state tests such as the Smarter Balance Summative Assessment, the CASP Summative Assessment. We also have our um, various EL assessments, our reading inventory, our LPAC. So we reviewed um, all that data, including our demographic data, the students that come to our school, socioeconomic data, and um, we learned that we're able to support student mastery of the content because many of our teachers are actually implementing mastery learning and grading, which really supports uh, really absorbing and mastering the content. Um, we're proud to say that we were one of the first schools to use Schoology, so many of our teachers are very well versed in Schoology, so students are able to look at their, their assessments, look at their scores, look at feedback, and take that so that they can use it to grow academically. Teachers use Schoology to provide instructional content and record grades and give their timely feedback. The counselors and our college career coach ensure that all students and families are aware of our AG3 requirements. So how are you going to successfully culminate from eighth grade and be successful in high school? Well, you need to know what those are. And so we're grateful that we have our counselors and college and career coach who go through all the requirements in middle school and what you will need beyond. And that way students have the tools they need to know how to be successful academically and do well on those assessments and support our data. Um, as mentioned, teachers use various formative and summative assessments. We use that data in professional development on our meetings and during our meetings on Tuesdays. And we try to look at those and see where we need to change our instruction, how we need to support our students, maybe adding supplemental materials to the curriculum. So we're constantly looking at information from you know, last week's math quiz 
to, you know, smarter balance assessments. And we're looking to see where do we need to improve. And that holds us as a school accountable. And we're able to really say, okay, maybe we didn't do a good job here. So let's fix it and let's do this. Or you know what, this actually worked really well in this class. Let's see if we can get the rest of the teachers to adopt it. And so that's what this particular category focuses on. Moving on. Okay, so in terms of our school culture and support for our students and really all of our stakeholders, there's many things that happen here at Madison. So we try to provide as many opportunities as possible to have the community engaged. And by community, I mean not only the parents, but everyone who surrounds at Ma Madison, from the workers, staff, just everyone in general. So we have meetings like this, coffee with the principal, we have parent center meetings, we have ELAC meetings, we have SSC meetings, back to school night. There's another meeting this afternoon for parents. So again, we have a lot of ways that parents and families can get involved every time at Madison. Um, we, can, we also bring in guest speakers. So there's a constant back and forth between Madison and the community at large um, that surrounds our students. And that is all to support their learning and to support how they feel when they're on campus. We also follow every single protocol, COVID-19 protocol from the district. So getting their daily pass. We also provided support for our parents to sign up for Parent Portal. We still do that today. Um, so all of those things are happening. We have tiered interventions. Uh, we use restorative justice practices. And in terms of our staff, we really try to have PDs that revolve around social emotional learning um, in order to better support our students along with anti and along with culturally relevant trainings as well. Um, in terms of our clubs, we have several student clubs to support, again, their interests and how they relate to one another. And we also have things like Win Week when we really prioritize students' grades and how they're doing on campus and really making that a priority so that they feel supported every step of the way. Um, and so in all of these different specific examples, we make sure that we're fostering a positive school culture and doing as much as we can to support our students every step of the way along with their families. Next slide. So after really looking at the different categories within the report and each category represents a different part of Madison, what we came in terms of reflection in terms of the results is our areas of strength include that students feel for the, based on surveys and based on everything and all the data, most staff and students feel safe at Madison. And again, everyone's following the safety protocols in terms of COVID-19. So every day, both staff and students have to have their daily pass. Every week, students and staff get tested. Um, and there are several supports for student learning that include a lot of technology. So Madison is a one-to-one -one campus and there's a lot of support in terms of integrating technology into our classrooms and their learning. Students' interests are honored and that's seen through the various clubs and school activities. And again, we make sure that we have a huge, um, like a lot of ways that different parent, like different families and different, depending on your schedule that we're trying to align. So you can always get involved. And so we have different meetings that happen at different times to try to make sure that we give everyone an opportunity to stay engaged and be involved. So, on the same note, as we looked at our areas of strength, of course, we looked at our areas of growth. Um, that's the point of this. You know, it's yes, like Ms. Mrs. Bloom said, we did talk about all the great things we're doing, but really the only way to be better is to look at where you need to, you know, improve. And so um, some of the things we noted were that we needed to prioritize a budget and expanding campus support positions based on staff and student needs. That could be 
enough more campus aids to help with supervision that could be more um, professional develop or uh, paraprofessionals to support in class teachers aides. Um, another counselor, uh, we were fortunate enough to budget to purchase an EL coordinator, Ms. Goldstein, and we're very grateful for that because our we have the largest population of English language learner students on campus in the local district Northeast. So we're very fortunate to have someone who's completely dedicated to supporting um, their needs. Um, we also need to focus on our positive behavior expectations and school-wide expectations. That's something that we're currently working on. Mrs. Bloom touched on the best cards, the buster badge, the buster bucks. So uh, we are trying to improve that. But again, we know that it's an area of growth. And when we focus on our positive behavior expectations and school-wide expectations, that's how we can focus on our school climate for not just the students, but our staff and community members as well. We want our surrounding community to see that the environment, the climate at Madison is one that is positive and safe for everybody. And so those are the things that we're gonna continue to work on while we collaborate in departments, um, in different leadership team meetings and, um, when we work with our stakeholders in um, governing committee leadership groups. Moving on. We also focused on critical student learning needs. These are things that we know that right now we really need to focus on. They're absolutely critical. And a lot of these things are in our school plan for student achievement. And this is something you can read. Our school plan for student achievement is online. It's accessible to all. But we know that our students need to increase proficiency in ELA and math. We know that our EL students need more support with reclassification. That's why we purchased our EL coordinator. We want to improve student attendance all around. We want to implement a school-wide system to better gather and analyze data and um, you know, use that data to um, drive curriculum and instructional strategies. We wanna further develop a, a targeted and intensive invent, intervention program for student academic and behavioral concerns. We're fortunate enough to have an eight period day now, and therefore we're able to implement an intervention program that focuses on not only their academic success, but also their social and emotional health. And finally, um, the critical learning need that we um, identified is, you know, back to the positive behavior and interventions and support. We want a multi-tiered system of support, support, you know, starting in the classroom, moving through our intervention prevention support coordinators and our counselors and our support staff. We want to establish a system that really truly supports student academic achievement and their social and emotional development. Moving on. So I wanna say thank you so much uh, for uh, our team, for all of the work that they have put into developing our WASP plan and all of the aspects of it that allowed us to be able to really look at our strengths and look at our areas to continue growing and look and developing to be able to provide the best learning environment for your students. So I wanna say thank you so much to our teachers, our students and um, our team who really is looking at building that community that I know that you're looking for for your, your child. So I want to also kind of, we had spoken, mentioned that one of the things that we do is we partner with some community partnerships. And so I just want to remind the, everybody that we do have opportunities to help families be able to get um, high-speed internet at home. Uh, Spectrum is the one that serves our neighborhood um, and it can be as low as $23 a month. And so we are here for you to be able to support you if you are looking to apply. If you have any questions, you can reach out to the school to Maria Flores in our parent center or Ellen, and they can help you with all of the information. You're also able to call directly to um, our internet for all uh, partner through school to home at the number you see here, or you can go directly to either one of these sites 
and be able to get information, additional information about how you or your family or somebody you might know might be able to qualify for some affordable broadband internet. And just know that every child here at Madison does qualify because they are enrolled in our national school lunch program. So I wanna open up the floor now to see if anybody has any questions and we are here to be, uh, um, to be able to help you out. And so just go ahead and you can put your questions in the Q&A and we will respond to them. But again, thank you for all of our families who are joining us today or on the viewing this later on during the recording. Thank you for everything you do for our Madison community.